This video is a review of the chapter on Gibbs energy and Helmholtz energy in chemical thermodynamics. So we start with the Helmholtz energy, A, which is defined as the internal energy minus temperature times entropy. And the change in Helmholtz energy for a given process is equal to the maximum amount of work which can be obtained from the system. So the change in Helmholtz energy during a given constant temperature and constant volume process is less than or equal to zero if that process is spontaneous. So if you have a constant temperature and, vo and constant volume process where your Helmholtz energy increases, you're going to need some external input of energy in order to make that process occur. We also have the Gibbs energy, which is defined as internal energy minus temperature times entropy plus pressure times volume, which you can also calculate as enthalpy minus TS or Helmholtz energy plus PV. The change in Gibbs energy during a process is equal to the maximum amount of non-pressure volume work which can be obtained from the system. So electrical work is one example of non-mechanical work that could be obtained from a system with a negative change in Gibbs energy. If you have a constant temperature and constant pressure process, then your Gibbs energy must be less than or equal to zero during that, during that process in order for this to be spontaneous. So if your Gibbs energy is greater than zero, Gibbs energy change is greater than zero during some constant temperature and pressure process, then you'll need some in external input of energy in order for the process to occur. These various thermodynamic state functions have certain variables which it is natural to express them in terms of. So for internal energy, it's natural to express it as a function of entropy and volume. Entropy can be expressed conversely as a function of internal energy and volume. Enthalpy as a function of entropy and pressure. The Helmholtz energy as a function of temperature and volume and lastly, the Gibbs energy, which is a function of temperature and pressure. Um, these expressions in terms of the natural variables of these thermodynamic state functions give rise to the Maxwell relations, which come about due to the fact that mixed second partial derivatives are equal to each other. So we get relations like ds dv at constant t is equal to dp dt at constant v, which comes from the Helmholtz energy. So we get the volume dependence of entropy as a function of the temperature dependence of pressure, which we take something that we didn't know, which is hard to calculate perhaps, and we express it in terms of something that we do know. Similarly, we can get from the Gibbs energy, the derivative of entropy with respect to pressure at constant temperature is equal to the negative partial derivative of volume with respect to temperature, which these values are much easier to get given that we can measure uh, the properties of gases as at various states. We can measure the change in entropy for a gas behaving non-ideally in terms of a fairly simple correction which we obtained from some Maxwell relations. We have the standard entropy minus the molar entropy at one bar in 298 Kelvin. So the standard entropy is it expressed in terms of some hypothetical ideal gas, whereas the molar entropy is for a real gas. And the difference in entropy from these two, from the non-ideality of the gas, to a first approximation comes from the first derivative of the second virile coefficient of the gas at 298 Kelvin with respect to temperature, and then that times one bar of pressure in whatever unit system of pressure you're using. The Gibbs-Helmholtz equation tells us how the Gibbs energy changes uh, with respect to temperature, which helps us uh, later on derive some important properties of phase changes and equilibrium constants. So the molar Gibbs energy equals, the change in molar Gibbs energy during a pressure change is equal to gas constant times temperature times natural log of final over initial pressure. And we can calculate the change of the change of the change in Gibbs energy, molar Gibbs energy, with respect to divided by temperature. Take that with respect to temperature. So we have delta G over T, how that changes with, with temperature. 
then that derivative at constant pressure is equal to the negative change in molar enthalpy divided by temperature squared. So the heat which the system absorbs during some constant pressure process tells us how the Gibbs energy divided by temperature will change over some given temperature range. Fugacity helps us express um, for non-ideal gases this type of pressure dependence in terms of an effective pressure for non-ideal gases. So the molar Gibbs energy as a function of temperature and pressure is equal to the standard Gibbs energy at that temperature plus gas constant times temperature times natural log of fugacity divided by standard fugacity. So the fugacity divided by the standard fugacity, which is just equal to one bar of pressure, is equal to pr the pressure of the gas divided by the standard pressure of the gas, which is one bar, and then times the exponential of the second variable coefficient times pressure plus third variable co coefficient times pressure squared plus etc cetera, etc cetera, as the virial expansion goes on. So the fugacity helps us encapsulate all of the non-ideal behavior of the gas into one metric which makes an effective pressure for some non-ideal gas. And then we define the fugacity coefficient which relates the fugacity to the pressure. For an ideal gas the fugacity and the pressure are the same so your fugacity coefficient for an ideal gas is 1 and any dev deviation of your fugacity coefficient from 1 indicates non-ideal behavior. So similarly, the natural log of the fugacity coefficient for an ideal gas is zero. So any non-zero value of the log of the fugacity coefficient indicates non-ideal behavior. And that can be calculated by measuring the state over a pressure range. You integrate from zero up to the given pressure of the compressibility factor Z, which is PV bar over RT, minus one over the pressure integrated with respect to pressure. So the change in the molar Gibbs energy going from a real to an ideal gas is going to be equal to minus gas constant times temperature times natural log of the fugacity coefficient. So an ideal gas wouldn't have any change in Gibbs energy because this natural log of the fugacity coefficient would be zero because the fugacity coefficient would be one.